Good evening, everyone. How you doing? Hey, Good evening. Good. Jonathan, uh, for people that don't know, we've only had Jonathan on one other time, right? Was it once or twice? Twice. Once. Twice. Okay. Where you? All right. This is Jonathan Faber. Uh, you do work for? Do you actually work for ILM or is it like a subcontracted company? No, I work for uh, Legacy Effects. Okay. Okay. And yeah. and you do a lot of work for Star Wars movies and other. We had a whole show about you before. Yeah. With with a lot of the work you do. Which yeah. you were very, very, um, what's the word, Jason? Modest. Overly humble. <laughs> yeah, overly humble. Overly humble about some of the really freaking cool shit you get to do. Like, <laughs> and and Jason and I have talked about it many times, how how subdued you are about it. But the rest of us are like, man, we wish we could do what you're doing. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Welcome funny, to the show, Jason. Thank you. What's funny, sometimes I forget, like, would that work on? Yeah. Yeah. And and when we answer, when you we asked you questions about what you did, oh yeah, I did do that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I did do that. Again, yeah, that's right. yeah, I, I think that. I worked on that. Yeah. yeah. I think so. You know, I'd be like, I freaking worked on this and this and this and this. You know, I, I do get it though, because I, I mean I'm I'm in no way comparing, but Chris, as you know, like working on certain projects, right? Sometimes people will say, like, oh, it's awesome that you worked on that. But what they don't realize is, and, and Jonathan, I think you can relate in this this manner. There's so many cooks in the kitchen, right? Oh, yeah. So you can't really necessarily say like, oh, well, I 100% worked on this. There's just so many cogs in that little machine, and it takes so many people to make one thing work. I think that's where it becomes sort of hard to just be like, yes, this is what I did. And because you don't want to be that person who's like coming across as being too, you know, too much of a showboat. Yeah. But you also don't want to like, I, I get it, like downplay too much, but it is hard. It is hard to sort of come across as like, this is what I've worked on without sort of misleading as to, you know, oh, well, you completely 100% did that because, you know, it does take, it takes a village. Yeah. And it's just one of those things that I, I, I guess can be somewhat complicated at times. But, you know, it's a good thing. Less. I mean, you've worked on a lot of amazing things and have an amazing resume, which, you oh, know, thanks. Thank you. It's a good thing I haven't worked on it because I would be telling my wife I'm famous every day like every time every time you're watching something you'd be pausing look at that little speck in the corner i made that oh it would drive it would drive her nuts if i told like i, I showed her all the times that i worked on something you know it, it just the pausing little the time credits. you can't leave the theater till the end credits run yeah just the little bit of time that 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 when we were in england where i had a, we had a couple people come up to us and say hi and it, it's still very bizarre for me for for people to come up and say hi to me. In fact, like I've recently got together with two other people that watch our shows, and I always joke around with my wife all the time. Like, you have no idea. I'm famous. I'm <laughs> I don't really think that, but I just like to fuck with her about that. Um, but uh, Jeff, I've been thinking about where you where you've been. Like, we've been uh, you haven't really been on the on the channel much, and and the, and the groups. Uh, I. I was worried about you. I hadn't heard, I haven't seen you much, but good to have you back, brother. Um, so let's talk about this show, right? Let's talk about. Um, so this has been a show that you've been talking about, Jason, for a little while now. To give you credit, um, you had mentioned a couple times. Let's do a show about you know little little tools that, like I use totally different tools than you use, and Jason, you use totally different tools than Jonathan uses. We all kind of use a lot of the same stuff, but there's always something that like I like to use that nobody else use, like likes to use or, you know, that just make things easier for myself or for you as well. Right. And I'm sure there's a lot of other guys in, in, in the group that also have tools that they would, if they suggest it and we start using them, we'd be like, Oh yeah, that'd be great to use, you know? Um, and I had you guys send me a couple pictures. Um, you know, there's there's the the usual basics, okay? I mean, like this picture that I, I use for a thumbnail. I mean, it these are the usual stuff, like yeah, CA glue and and tweezers and calibers. I, I I can't go without a calibers right now. I finally got one after months. I mean, probably I just recently got this maybe a year ago. I don't know how I got by without it. Um you know, just this is the normal stuff, right? One thing I do use a lot that 
I don't know if many people do is I use toothpicks. I have, I throw away, throw away thousands of toothpicks, right? I use them to, to get in real close places with glue or to just, you know, put some glue on a little piece instead of using the bottle and getting a whole bunch of goop all over the place. Um, does any of you guys use toothpicks or anything like that? No, constantly. I constantly. Okay, good. Uh, I use a little stainless steel. It's a little. It's actually a, some of the images I showed you. The same company makes it. It's this little tray holds glue and has these tiny, thin stainless steel tips. I was actually using like sewing needles and pins to get the really fine. Remember we talking the other day, Chris, about like the styrene layers, yeah. those fine yeah. points. Um, yeah, I just got into the habit of using that, and I, I think I just kind of habitually got into it and never stared away from it. Um, the other thing about the different tools too that it's interesting is not just what we become comfortable with, right? And that we start using as our go-to, but everybody's working out of a different space, right? Some people have large workspaces. Some people have garages. Some people like myself, who's in somewhat of a high rise, if you will. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of ventilation or open space. So, you know, I, I have to choose wisely what tools that I could use, you know, things that are caustic or, or have heavy, you know, fumes, things like that. You know, I, I have to choose wisely. Um, also, space-wise, too, right? Um, you know, when my workspace is limited, I have to take that into consideration as well. So there's all these different factors that come into play. Um, also, different levels of expertise, things that get shared, and you try that out, et cetera, and you're like, oh, this works as well. So I just figured it'd be good all around just to kind of share some things that we do, and then hopefully people in the comments, and as people see the video and watch it, can start posting some of their their ideas. Um, yeah. Because when they put yeah. miniatures or studio scale or you know you're 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 chiseling wood to make bucks or anything like that i mean there's just a wide array of things that i feel like we could all be you know exposed to and, and get more experience yeah chris actually on the group he kind of kicked it off a little bit chris gear is it g-i-e-r mm -hmm. um he put up the the styrene chopper right oh yeah and like Days before, I was thinking, all right, I'm going to use, I'm, how can I rig up some kind of jig? Because I need to cut some styrene to the exact same length and stuff. And a couple of days later, he puts that up. I'm like, oh, boom, I bought it. I was like, it's coming from Australia. I, I still haven't got it yet. But, you know, there might be a lot of different tools that people can put up in the group. And like, say myself, I'll probably buy a lot of them. You know, I'll uh, try each one, see which one makes it easier for yourself. Um, I will point out one thing. Okay, I I I will, haven't been home this week, so I couldn't take a lot of pictures of a lot of my tools. This is, and I don't really use a lot of different crazy, off the wall stuff. Um, but I'm in a hotel, and I bought this a while ago, and I was thinking, I don't know, I I figured I bought it, you know, just to use it in my shop, but I never did. So. I was packing up stuff to come. I have a bin of, of stuff, tools that I brought to my hotel room so I could work on the sand crawler because I got five days in, in a hotel just to look, you know, watch TV and I don't want to do that. So um, one of the things I, I had and I didn't realize it and it actually came in very, very handy. So I didn't make a mess all over the hotel room was this nail dust collector. Right? Nice. Yeah. So it has worked beautifully. I can't even tell you how how great it's worked. Like I've been filing some uh, some styrene edges, you know, for the plates, and it sucks it right in. Like there's no dust anywhere in my room whatsoever. And now, uh, this right here, Chris, not to interrupt, but this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Something that right. would be completely just off the books. And right, you're in a hotel. You don't want to make a mess. You also don't want to be bringing mm -hmm. this stuff in. Here's a most mm -hmm. here's a random thing that works amazing. Yeah, I might I might have to pick one of those up. I don't have anything like that at home. I just I was just thinking it up. I have the little shop vac one, but nothing yeah. like this that like pulls it right in. Yeah, that's cool. Oh yeah, it's great. It it really did work really well. I, it it's pretty powerful too. It's a little loud, but um it sucks it in. There's a filter and it actually helps to circulate the air because out the bottom it like like forces the air out like it circulates and it like kind of moves the air in, in the room around a little better um i don't remember how i think it was really cheap i wouldn't have bought it if it was expensive so um 
yeah, try it out. Check it out. It might work for you. That's cool. That is the that's the one that I, toothpicks and this are what I haven't. Yeah. I have. I actually sure. really like the side there, Chris, especially for me where I was just mentioning. My space is a little bit more limiting as far as like exhaust and you know being able to make a mess, things like that. So th this would be perfect. I mean, it's great for anybody, right? As far as mess and things like yeah. that. But this is even better where you know trying to clean up spills and you know resin. And for most who know. I'm, I'm obsessive with trying to get everything fine and neat and clean and sanding. So this, this is even more so a great tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Drives me nuts when I have dust laying all over the place. I gotta be honest. Like I, I clean my shop daily. I can't stand it when it's a disaster. Like, and, and when I do like it's by the end of the day, when I'm like moving things around and doing a bunch of stuff. And then at the end of the day, I have to like stop what I'm doing because it drives me crazy. There's too much stuff that I'm working around and moving to get at what I want and knocking shit over. So yeah, this was, this was one of those, I haven't used it. I bought it probably six months ago. It's been in the bottom of a bin and I'm like, Oh, this will work perfectly for the hotel room. So yeah. That's cool. Uh, let's, let's bring up, um, you, you were talking about the calipers. Um, I, I had to buy a second pair because I've got I've got my really good pair for work and I, I just I was at home like I can't I need calipers so oh, yeah. I had to buy like oh, a, yeah. a cheap second pair. I use them for everything. I use them every day. Yeah. It's tough though when you buy a cheap cheap pair, you notice the difference. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like it's yeah. like a set of knives, right? When you have like the really expensive knives versus yeah. like the knives you get at the department store, you notice the difference. I didn't go super cheap. Is there They're something like forty or fifty bucks? But my good ones are. A lot of money. Are, is there something that other than calibers that you use at work that you every day is just a staple? Yeah, I, I mean, I've kind of have to have a second set of tools for one for work and okay. one for home because there are just so many things that I use that I can't really do without. And just simple okay. stuff, you know, jackdaws and sanding and stuff like that. But. Right. All right. Let's pull up. Should we do Jonathan's or Jason's? Let's do it, Jonathan's first. Yeah. Okay. okay. So help me with this, Jonathan. What is what what is this? I mean, I know what it is, but what do you do with <laughs> this? Uh, let's see. Bring it up. This. Oh yeah. So I use that. It's just a piece of angle, small piece of angle aluminum, and I use right. it for. Uh, if I'm ever having to make a straight line on a tube or something, you know, like, yeah, just a tube like that, it, uh, it, it writes itself. So it's always perpendicular to the, or uh, parallel with the tube. And so you can draw lines on it that are, or even scribe lines that are always parallel with the tube. So you don't have to, it makes it way easier. Mm. That would Simple work well on a like tie bomber. Yeah. I use it on a tie bomber. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I have a couple different sizes for different, you know, cause it, it'll fit a really wide range of tubes. But if it's too big or too small, like, you know, I, I have a couple different sizes. I'll have to remember that when I do my tie bomber. I'm sure I won't, but I, I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> we, we should have opened it with the preface of get your notebook ready, right? Start jumping yes. things down. <laughs> Write things down. I'm Jason had asked terrible. if we were, Jason had asked if we were going to put links in the, in the, um, in the in the comments in the in the description but i have to say mine well okay the 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 nail thing would, would was from amazon but uh most of jonathan's is not like amazon bought stuff right it's yeah. it, it well, yeah yours we'll get to yours jason <laughs> uh okay so help me with this one the, there's the, double-sided tape right well it's not it's, it's something called butyl okay um, and it's kind of thick and it is double-sided uh, I use it at work constantly. I get the rolls of this stuff. Um, and what we use it for a lot at work is like, I think there's a, I sent another, yeah, is I'll yeah. put it on a, like a, on a piece of wood or a stir stick or whatever. And mm -hmm. then I'll put, attach, I'll stick parts to it that I'm going to paint. Okay. And so that way you don't have to touch them and you can paint them and set it down and nothing touches them. And because you, you really don't want to paint anything like against, like having it like laying down. With whatever's around it will 
get picked up in the air and drop back on it like any kind of dust or anything. So you really want to just sort of have it in the air and paint it. And so the okay. great thing about the great thing about the butyl is it'll hold it really well. But then if you grab, you see the end where it's, it's not, nothing on it. If you grab that and pull, it's like those commando strips. Oh, okay. Okay. Where it'll it'll pull and then the parts the parts it'll just let go of the parts. That's what I was. That's what mm. I was curious about. I was going to say, and you answered my question, but how do you how do you get it off? One thing I use, uh, two things, either for painting and or putting something temporarily in place. I know a lot of guys use masking tape, right, to just kind of yeah. hold it in place, get the measurements. I actually use framers tape. You know, like when you go to a framer and have something framed, yeah. double sided yeah. tape, because it's heavy enough to to hold most things up to five or plus pounds but it pops right off when you're done so if you have to hold something in place and or paint something and like you said you don't want to put on a flat surface where it sticks or debris debris will catch but yeah. i tend to usually need um i have to either let it wait for it to dry and use a little tool to lift it but this is even better the fact that you can just yank it and have the piece yeah kind of just come done. yeah if you're dealing with like really small intricate pieces you just pull the butyl and it just lets go so you don't have to put any pressure on the part itself trying to get it off break it or whatever now the name is that the brand or is that no i think it's what it is there's okay. a couple, there's a couple different versions there's this version which is like a clear it's not really thin it's like an eighth of an inch thick um it's like a clear tape it's kind of rubbery and stretchy but then there's also another kind of butyl that is used on cars it's like round and black and super sticky and it that i don't use that stuff i use this it, it's almost like tape mm. but a lot thicker yeah usually oh, okay. i'll usually i'll take a strip of masking tape and roll it up and then put it on cardboard that's what i usually do but i like this idea better yeah yeah definitely the only downside yeah. is if you get too much paint on it sometimes the butyl will get brittle and it'll snap instead of stretching but oh uh, okay pedro says i prefer ca glue applicators the thin plastic ones versus toothpicks Hmm. Yeah, I would have to agree with that, okay? Uh, the toothpicks actually become a problem after a little while because they tend to roll into my – my. <laughs> I use I use, uh, I use sandwich bags, right? And I – like dollar sandwich bags from the dollar store. And I put like a dab of glue on and then I'll, I'll use, use the toothpick, you know, to get the glue up. And it never fails. My toothpick ends up rolling into the glue and – all the glue gets absorbed into the toothpick. But yeah. the good thing about it is the toothpick is like, it's like a thousand of them for a dollar. You know, like yeah. I could just well, throw like them out. Yeah. But I could also yes. pitch a John that I could pitch a Chris like this, like Edward says a hands up. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I'll grab the wrong side. You know, it always happens, yeah. never fails. You know, I do, what it I do for glue is uh, those little espresso cups you can get, little paper ones. Yeah. Uh, let's put this upside down. And put put the glue okay. in the back of it. Ah, uh, you know what? I should start collecting all of those little plastic um, Starbucks. Right? They have those little green plastic things. They stick in the hole so that when you're walking yeah. or driving, yeah. it doesn't splash up. Yeah. I just take them and throw them out. I should start collecting them and start using those. Yeah. That's a Man, great idea. Yeah. Some some of the things you wouldn't think of. Now, when we get to my pictures, not not to try to hijack the conversation. I did a lot of just copy and paste of some standard tools, but still ones that might be a little different only because, I mean, we kind of had this little random earthquake here on the East Coast, which was which is interesting, but we just got nailed with the Nor'easter yesterday. No internet, no electricity, et cetera. One of the reasons why we kind of skipped the show as well. Um, but real quick, I didn't have a chance to take pictures of like actual items. Um, but one thing that I use that comes in really, really handy for two reasons on, on both ends is, you know, Pringles, but they have like a little snack size right yeah. like this yay bake so if you get the little snack size cup because of the shape of the pringle so for the inside it's great for like using for water or mixing paint or solvents but then you flip it over and it's got that divot the pringle divot so you can put glue and other things there and use it as like a little scoop and a little it, it's it's just a <laughs> I, I anything like that i always That's say because cool i feel like i can yeah utilize it for something else later i get a lot of those i get those um they're shot glass Dixie cups, right? Mm -hmm. And they're just paper, plastic, paper with, or plastic with, you know, wax or something. And I get a box of like, I don't know, a couple hundred of them to mix up paint and just, I just throw it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, um, that's what I'm talking about for like the glue. I, I use those and flip them over. Those, so, so there's like a little, like a little indent in the in the what is normally the bottom, but becomes the top when you flip it over. Right. So next picture is scribe tool, right? Yeah, that, that's my scriber. It's a, it's actually a pin vise, and then I just chuck up a scribe in the end of it. And I couldn't. Now, how, okay. how hard can you go on this before it starts to dull out? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I've never had it dull. So it's like a dental tool. You just keep yeah. going with it. Really? Nice. For for a million dollars, I couldn't tell you where I got that scribe, but. Uh, oh, that's that one tool that like you can't lose, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Yeah. If if I if I can't find it, I go like, oh my god, where's? I <laughs> hate doing one of these. Yeah. It's super sharp too. Yeah. Like it'll. I've poked myself <laughs> a few times. Hmm. I'll have to check one out. Check. Pin vice, huh? Yeah. And if you don't have I'm a pin vice, pin, you got to get yourself a pin vice, especially if you're building okay. Star Wars models. Pin vice will be used for scribe, the scribe tools, right? The scribe no, it's tips. Actually, or do you use it, it for other things as well? Well, it's actually a little tiny drill. It's You just chuck yeah. up little tiny drill bits. Oh, yeah, that I have. Yeah. That I do have. Yeah, the little hand one that you just twist with your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a neat little handy. Okay, dyno dymo tape. That's that's a good one for yeah. scribing. Yeah, that little little guy. I bought scribing. these this scribing. I bought this scribing tape right, and it was like clear, and it was like eighth of an inch, and it's worthless. Like it's just. It's, this this is like solid and thick and probably works a million times. It works pretty well. It's cheap too. And it's of course my problem with scribing is I always go like, you know, it's like the Tootsie Pop commercials or whatever, where it's like one, two, and then you know, try to I get yeah. impatient. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what's really frustrating is you'll be doing it and then you'll do it nice and slow and slow, and then you think you got the groove okay, right? Oh, and, you and then when you go to scribe oh. All of a sudden, yeah. just right off the oh, rails. Just it's yeah. like a record. And, and like not only, <laughs> yeah, so not, not only just a little tiny bit. We're talking like a whole inch of 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 past the, the line for some unknown reason. Yeah. Your brain don't function fast enough to stop it. <laughs> this mine doesn't. Oh no! When you jump the track, that's it. Yeah. I mean, there's even times where I've done it deep enough where I've had to take like some putty and fill it in, and yeah. you know, like oh, yeah. a nice little yeah. gouge. And I'm like, Man, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's annoying too. Oh Man. yeah. I actually just learned about this recently from you, Jonathan. Remember, I was we were talking about that because I was using scribe tape as well, which I feel it works pretty decent. Um, the one that I buy, but the the dynamo tape is is fantastic because it's it's so rugged. Yeah, it's it's really stiff. It works really well. Yeah, and it stays okay, in place. What is this? Yeah, Th this is I actually use this for what it's intended for, but uh, it's meant for for jewelry. My wife makes jewelry, and it's the so the three rollers sort of come together to form a triangle and if you have it's a wire straightener okay. So, oh, okay so if you're doing any wire you just put it in sort of fold the other two rollers around it and then pull the wire through it and it'll make the lower wire look like the upper wire yeah uh, i'm because how many times are you trying to form something and bend it yeah. And then you All end up time. tossing up the rest because you've you've kind of manipulated it too much. But if that, yeah, that's great for repurposing or just making nice, yeah. straight, clean lines. Yeah. It's a, it's a tool she totally turned me on to. That she, that she had one. I was like, oh, what is that? She's like, what's a wire straightener? <laughs> like, I'm trying to figure out how it, how it works. Well, it just kind of feeds through like a pasta maker almost, right? Well, yeah. yeah. If you, you sort of like, it's sort of, if you lay it center on that center roller, and then the other two rollers come up to form a triangle, and it oh. cap captures it in between oh, all the yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And then you just hold with one hand and pull the wire through with the other hand. That's interesting. Yeah. Maybe we do need to make a list. That's a good job. <laughs> I'm telling. I'm going to keep these pictures in, on file. So yeah. So I know what to get. You might have to even yeah. go apart. Yeah, I mean, we'll get other people on here to get their ideas on what they do. Even this, of, uh, here's, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. I was just bringing up. Um, I'm not. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm not gonna try. 
pronounce the first name, but Winlord. Heat tape for for electronics makes a nice crest chest scribing tape that is more flexible than demo to a tape. Heat tape. For I'm electronics. Sure. I was gonna hmm. say, um sometimes some of the most simplest things, because you just get so used to like because I remember um was it uh, some of the art? Remember we talked about some of the archive X where the consistency, some are thicker than others. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, just get a paint mixer, you know, the little shaker. Or they had the magnetic ones or they kind of yeah. used the like labs to mix blood and plasma. And I was like, buy one of those. And, you know, you would think that like that was just a, you know, you'd have one. You're like, oh, and then now it's like you use it all the time, right? It's just sometimes as simple as well, you use it all the time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. before it's just you would think that like, oh, that's something everybody has. And sometimes <laughs> it's you don't realize it. You know, it's not always something that you think of. Thermal tape and Thermal dynamo tape. tape. Okay. Yeah, I had that damn spell checker. I told I told Jonathan <laughs> our show was last night. He's like, I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice it till like five hours later, way past the time it would have been a show. We, I hope you weren't like waiting for a, a link at 945 yesterday, were you? No, no. I, fig I figured it was a typo. Yeah. Cancel this okay. Plan. Thermo it's tape. Better. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Hey, anybody else in the, listening in the, in, the, in the chat, you know, chime in. We'd love to hear what what you guys use, think, you know, could be. I'm going to have to get one of these wire straighteners, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah that's almost interesting. Must. Yeah, especially, like, if you're going to do, you know, like a, a Y-Wing where there's so much, Yeah. Exactly. you know. And paperclip. What do you use this for? Yeah, it's just I, I use the binder clips for. It's like a it's tiny little clamp. So if mm -hmm. I'm gluing anything together, I can just clamp it with the binder clip. Yeah. Yeah, I use these too. It's nice. And I also, use, I use a few plastic ones from uh, Harbor Freight. You buy the bag of them. Oh yeah. Little plastic ones. Little, little clamps. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that oh you got more. What's this one? This this is for uh, they make it for doing uh, what do you call it uh, like crystal uh, like crystal jewelry type of thing. The one end is sticky. Okay. They normally come in pairs, but the one end is sticky. So if you're trying to put like really small parts on something, it's sometimes I use that for just to mm -hmm. sort of grab the part, the sticky end, and and put it down. Yeah. With that is something that really would come in handy. I can't tell you how many times I'm on my knees looking underneath my table and trying to find the little piece that I've dropped and I'm cursing. And it it doesn't ever roll. It rolls like 10 feet the other direction than what you think it's going to go, you know? Yeah. It's like a football. But, um, yeah. It's a football and it goes the wrong direction. Yeah. You think it goes that way or that way. Right. And you go looking over there and it's actually 20 feet behind you. So, yeah. That, re this that reminds me. Um, so if anybody's ever been to a hobby shop or to Michael's, they have those things called diamond dart, right? And the diamond art comes with these little sheets. It's this stuff right here. It's a little pink, little pink square. Sometimes they're bigger. You can buy it on Amazon. It's got a cover on both hold ends, on, right? Hold on, you're frozen. Let me put Am you I'm bigger. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So you can get bigger, bigger squares of it, right? It's got plastic over it to cover it. You can kind of see, but this mm -hmm. stuff is a little pen. That's why it has these little holes in it, if you can see. Those little holes. Take the pen mm -hmm. and you poke into it, and that allows you to just pick pieces up and pop them off. Boop, 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 just like that. And it, it was initially, from what I gather, made for that diamond art. So you could pick up the little crystals and apply them to the art, kind of like a paint by number. But like Jonathan said, it works perfect for getting little, mm -hmm. as we were saying the other day, Chris, one 700 chip pieces that just disappear into the ether, you know, they just fall and you never see them again. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect for just boom and then putting a piece right on. That's cool. I like this one, especially Jonathan. You gotta send me a link to what these where to get these, what All they're right, called yeah, specifically. We'll do that. Yeah. What's the what's what what's the other end used for? Well if you have two of them you can uh use the sticky end to put a piece down and then use the other end to hold it as you pull the the mm. stick off. Oh, okay. I didn't say that, yeah. And these are like matchstick sizes, right? Maybe they're a little bigger. They're bigger than that, yeah. 
Those are one. Those five are one inches. Inch are those five inches. Yeah. Okay. So there's five inches. Let's see. Uh, but you could, that Windlord. gives you good room for like reach around too and getting to different places. Wax pencils used in nail salons are perfect for picking up small parts. There you go. Yeah. Because they do the, the nail yeah. art. It's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I actually yeah. bought. Um, go ahead. Oh, the other thing saying, I'll John? do is. Uh, the other thing I'll do, which uh, is I'll just take my exacto and just stab the part. Yeah, I do too. I don't like doing that because sometimes I push it too far through. Yeah. And then when I go to put it on the piece, I'm actually like, it won't go flat because I've, I've had the, the tip going through too far. Oh, going through, yeah. And then you're exclusing it when you're trying yeah. to shimmy it off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of nail salons. I in my paint booth, I actually bought um, on Amazon, real cheap. I think like ten bucks. They sell little acrylic um, nail nail polish holders, like shelves for 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 nail polish. Like you can put, like I have them lined inside my my uh, spray booth, and I just grab all the little paint bottles out of it. It's just little acrylic, cheap, like inch and a half thick. To hold the paint instead of like reaching into boxes or whatever you have your paints laying on, around on, you know. Oh, that's actually convenient. Yeah. You had a really good one, Chris, when we were talking about pieces just bouncing on the floor and disappearing. Um, it was the bead mat, remember? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Those are great. Something that would have never crossed my mind, and now it's like you know you, you can't live without it. Yeah. Say that again, Jason. The the bead mat. The bead mat. Yeah. When you when you brought that up, something that just would have never crossed my mind. It was like a light bulb. You know, just wow. Yeah. I I got one, and now I'm like, how did I live without it this long? Yeah, I I was building a um, a, a pro droid for the archive X thing, um, and I was using beads, and I went to Hobby Lobby, and I I had used beads prior to this, and they. Fell, fall and bounce right so when i was at hobby lobby they had these they're just felt pads like this big to put underneath so that and when they when pieces drop they don't bounce it just stops right there on the bead mat works beautifully i should use it more often but i don't <laughs> <laughs> i've got i've got I one of it at home but i don't use I, it i hardly ever use it but i really should yeah it's great for when you're using little pieces like tonight i was using I had this little tiny piece that I was putting on the front of the crawler, right? And I stabbed it with the 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 Zacto knife. And this floor is very dark, okay? And the piece was was uh, like a real dark olive green. And I'm I have my phone and my hand underneath the Zacto as I'm going over to put it on because if I drop this, I'll never find it Done. ever. Yeah. And then I got to buy another forty dollar kit, you know. Um, but yeah, that that's that that worked real good. The the bead mat. I should have brought that with me. So <clears throat> and I think we got oh yeah, these are great. I need to memory boards, man. Buy yeah. the buy I need the... to get new ones. I bought these. These are <clears throat> Stevens International ones. Right? Let me put bigger. Is my internet okay or am I slow? A little choppy, but it's okay. Yeah, you're right. I even paid for the higher, the better in, in, internet here. Jesus Christ. Uh, Stevens International, right? So then um, it's 180 grit on both sides, but a lot of the other ones have like 180, 220. I use these all the time. In fact, I need new ones because I think I wore them down so much. But these are freaking awesome. To make it more cost effective, I actually go to the. Uh... You know those they have those stores like we get hair dye and you know nail tech stuff and because you can buy they have shelves of emery boards of all different kinds of grits literally yeah. like you can go from like fine to shaping to sanding to smoothing some that are really rough and you can buy i mean they're like 10 cents 20 cents for a pack of two pack of three and you can actually cut them into different shapes and you know surprisingly these ones that i got the the Stevens International ones, they have lasted me a very long time. They have not worn down. 
They that's that. the catch with it too. The, the cheap yeah. salon ones will run out pretty quickly. Yeah. But yeah. 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 I'm always, I always cut, I was coming down on like little tiny strips or whatever. Getting to places. Yeah. Sometimes I actually like, especially with these ones, Jonathan, because these are just regular nail files, right? Yeah. I actually like when they start to wear down because yeah. you get a little bit softer and smoother. We can get into some of the finer areas and you can kind of yeah. bend it around your thumb and kind of get in there. And yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I have, a, I don't think I have a picture of it here, but I, 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 I was looking at the thumbnail with the, the kicker, the, the kicker bottle is a squeeze bottle or a spray bottle. Yeah. And I, I use a kicker? little, yeah, I use a little bottle with a little tiny, it's got a needle applicator. So you can just, you can just drop one, one drop at a time. Well, that's what I take. I take the, um, the tip, the cap off and just pull it out and use the, the tube to drop uh, a drop, right? Right. I don't ever put it on the groove because then the glue will gunk up the the tube that's inside. Yeah. But instead yeah. of spraying it, I'll take the tube off and just touch close to, and it it, it like spreads and runs yeah. into the glue. Yeah. But the problem with that is I can't tell you how many times I've knocked over that bottle, and a whole bottle of Zip Kicker ends up all over my floor. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what's nice yeah. about these these little needle bottles is. You know, you could tip it over, nothing happens, and you turn upside down and squeeze a little bit, and it'll drop out a bunch or just a drop at a time. Oh, so um, you have like control over. Yeah, and it's, it's and it's got a it's a metal needle, and the good thing about it is if you do get it in the glue and it clogs up, it's I'm sure not the safest thing, but if you turn it sideways and squeeze it, and then mm -hmm. pull the lighter underneath the needle, it'll clear it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay, it, that it makes burns sense. out all the glue and everything. One more thing that I, I use a lot of, and I, I like I said, I wasn't home to take pictures. Um, God, what are they called? Um, oh, I'll look it up. It's it's it, it's they use it in like uh, labs uh, where you squeeze the, the bulb at the top, and then it sucks up a certain amount of liquid. Uh, yeah. What the hell are they called? Do you know what they're called? I don't know the name of them, but I use them all the time. The little droplets. Yeah. It's, well, it's oh, called like, yeah, the droplet like a things. Yeah. Like a, like a droplet lipid. Yeah. Like a pipette kind of thing. Yeah, pipette. pipette or, that's it. Yeah. Pipette, and I bought like a thousand of them on Amazon for like twenty dollars. Yeah, like a whole yeah. big bag of them. And I brought them home the one day. My wife's like, "What are you gonna do with that?" It's great for like adding little amounts of um, a of thinner for your airbrush or oh, yeah. to even like color mixing. And yeah, I color also, mixing. yeah, color mixing. Yeah, yeah, and I even use it for for. Uh, uh, resin mixes like uh so that i have the same amount if i don't want to use a whole lot like i'll just take like one pipette put it in or two pipettes and then it's evenly distributed between you know 50 50 you know and i just throw it out it's you know we got a thousand of them for like 20 bucks um hey bjorn how's it going man uh hey he makes his own sanding boards with sandpaper and ca and ice cream sticks. There you go. Nice. Pipe I've done that, but I'm too lazy. Then, <laughs> dental point. points or paper points make excellent applicators for precision glue placement or in a pinch can be used to clean airbrush nozzles. Yeah. I, hope, I don't know what I don't know what a dental point is or a paper point. What is it? So hey, you, if you look at the picture, you'll see. Yeah, I, I'll probably recognize it once I see it. Guys, thanks for the comments. I, I, I really am want everybody to just chime in and tell us, you know, some of the things that you use. Um, even if you're listening after it being live, put it in the comments what you what you use so that we can see it and we can all help each other. You know, try to figure out better ways to make our lives easier and not be cursing up a storm while we're trying to do something. <laughs> Uh, to me, airbrush thinner as styrene extra thin glue. I'd heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Air, uh, uh, airbrush thinner. Yeah. Not as caustic and tech, you know, smell as bad. Like paper darts you made as a kid, but really tiny. Like these, Chris. I don't know if you, if you're my, hold on my. 
I don't remember the name. Similar to that. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen those. I mean, there's different variations. But okay. Um, it's funny. No. All right. Let's like, bring up. Uh, what? Yeah, you can take me off the screen. I was gonna say something I use often, where I have, you know, um, a space that isn't very ventilated. <clears throat> And uh, you know, I'm not working in a large outdoor space. Is some of them might laugh, but you know those uh, puppy pee pads? They're blue and then really absorbent. You know what I'm talking about? You yeah. told me this before. Yeah, yeah. Dude, when you're painting, if I have to like, you know, if I'm, I'm if I'm in like my back utility closet or you know at the kitchen counter or anything, it works amazing. Or I'll even tape it up, and if I'm spraying something, you know, it'll just catch it. And plus, it's great for testing. So if you're just kind of like spritzing different colors and things like that, it's it, it, they're just great to, to work with. And they're great to work with underneath. So if you're dropping things, dropping paint, dropping salt, especially me because I mix a lot of paint. I do a lot of paint mixing. It's great for just catching a lot of things because it's, one, it's super absorbent. And then they're disposable. So when you're done, you just wrap it up and toss it out. Yeah. What I love about this is we're coming up with ideas that are just like household items that are – cheap yeah. and throw yeah. and easily disposable um less that you have to clean up like i i i don't want to have to clean everything i use you know i get straight in the garbage um but like these are all like household i real cheap like dollar stuff you know i have dollar store next to me and i use i go to it all the time to buy stuff like this mm -hmm. you know um well, we can all agree to this. Sometimes it, is, it isn't even about saving money, right? Sometimes it's just about you're working on something, and if you don't have supplies, you just look around the house and start thinking, my guy, yeah. like, what can I use? Yeah. You know, what can I? Exactly. Like this is like you said, the dollar store, right? This is the type of stuff I love getting at the dollar store. Little cups like this for paint mixing and, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, just, yeah. just perfect. And then you can also, because they're hard plastic, you can use them for, you know, scratch building and whatever. I mean, it's just all about figuring out, like, what works in the moment. I can't tell you how much stuff I take mm -hmm. from like I'll go into my wife's room and I'll take around with like makeup bottles and whatever and I'm just like, oh, this will work perfect for this, and I'm gonna cut this up for this. And you know, it's like just, just don't get caught. You... Mm -hmm. Hello? Okay. Um one thing I I do um when I'm when I'm scoring styrene, I don't like using exactos for scoring styrene. I think it's too either flimsy or just like not yeah it's controllable but it just it's too fine of a tip and it could go to a to a rot you know out of the out of the way and also it's like a very you know just a pencil you know you're holding a pencil i use one of these things i just utility knife home depot just i have more control over it and i've been using these for forever you know i, I was an electrician so i i I use these more more proficiently than other stuff. But this is what I, I use to score Tyrene. Yeah. Yeah, I, I use a, a snap off blade knife every once in a while. Okay. All right, let's get to Jason's list. Now, Jason, this stuff, some of this, you have you'll have to really explain some of this stuff because some of this stuff looks like alien abduction violating tools like, <laughs> i gotta tell you i was like i was like what the hell is this and what is that like i expect to see this coming at me if you know when when they come down to get me and want to probe me you know what i mean so yeah right, so this, I, I mean this okay. is obviously a camera right yeah guys believe it or not all right so chris as you know I, and most won't one of the ways I learned to build very quickly, so I, I, I had a lot of experience with, with art and creativity. I've, I've been painting for years, things like that. But as far as building models specifically from scratch, um, the way I learned very quickly was reverse engineering, having a model next to me and then basically learning how to replicate that, right? I did that with uh, an ATST, a chicken walker. I did it with a, a TIE fighter and I'd basically look at what I had and build it next to me. Well, sometimes you don't want to break down an entire model or sometimes you just want to all right perfect example sand crawler right you want to know where certain areas are what something looks like and things like that i also have an issue with my vision i have i have poor vision um uh, what you guys don't see but i i actually wear glasses i took them off for the show but long story short 
This is great because it's tiny, it's skinny, and you can get into every crevice, or even if you're building something, right? And you're not reverse engineering it. Let's just say you're building it up and you're like, oh, I forgot a piece. I, I got to see if I can get in this area. It's a little camera. It's kind of like an endoscope. Like if you've ever been to the doctor and had an endoscopy or something like that, or you had to snake something, it just goes right in and it gives you a nice, perfect picture and it plugs right into your phone. You can buy them on Amazon for $20. And it is a great tool. I love this thing. I use it for so many things and figuring out like, you know, I'm halfway through a build and maybe something isn't like structurally sound and I'll just kind of snake that in and like what will fit where and how can I do this or what pieces can I kind of debomb and take apart. And it's just great overall for being able to see things and, and getting in little areas. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, alien, 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 alien probe tool. <laughs> No, I, 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 I could like, I could use this for. I actually could have used this to see what was in my wall the other day because I was trying to figure out what, how I'm going to run something, and I wanted to see if there was wood down the wall or in my way when I was trying to fish it. But it, it's cheap on Amazon. It's twenty bucks. You buy it for twenty, thirty dollars, depending on the brands. <clears throat> They're okay. all they all do the same thing. I mean, they they have fancier ones, but you don't really need it, especially for, like right. mine. Mine's covered in glue and, and paint, and it's just not, you know, I, I buy them cheap just because, like, I know they're going to take a beat. And um, I use them for, like, even, like, if you have an armature and you want to see how to snake wires and things like that, or it's just, it just comes in handy for a cheap tool. <laughs> Pedro says, never in my <laughs> life. Reminds me of my last colonoscopy. <laughs> it's yeah. than it yeah. guys. I mean, there. It, Listen, it's I no got funny. Oh, I know I shouldn't say this, but, like. Like I, I just recently like got an endoscopy, right? And they they said, well, you're here and you're of age, you might as well do the other end, right? So I'm like, fine, whatever. So the doctor comes, I think I told you this, Jason. The doctor comes in, he's talking to me, he's like, we'll make sure we do the endoscopy first so you don't wake up with a funny taste in your mouth. <laughs> it's like, thanks, doc. <laughs> I was like, really? I, I really didn't need to hear that. So yeah, <laughs> that's good humor, just though. That's definitely good humor. Uh, basically, yeah. basically what oh, it Stuart is. Stuart, hey, Stuart, hey guys, my two tips: never trust someone's blueprint. <laughs> okay. And never, never trust your own blueprint. Also, cardboard is your friend. I use cardboard all the time. Like, uh, are you talking that. cardboard? He's talking cardboard as in like shaping panels. Um, I use cardboard like I, I take boxes that I get from Amazon, cut them up and use them to to tape stuff to to paint. And so I can like hold it and move it and turn it around. Um, yeah, cardboard. Oh, to, okay. I used to. I have something on my tool list that I use to that, but I didn't. Yeah, that. he uses it. He uses cardboard as as a uh, template. Basically, yeah. for his his styrene, Stuart. I got to tell you, man. If you're still listening, I have been watching your videos, and man, you ah, your building is is gorgeous. It is. Yeah, we were just talking very, about you the other very day. Very nice. Yeah, we were talking about you the other day, and and uh, I don't I, I don't even know how you're gonna paint that thing. Like, I would leave it in kit parts. That's how beautiful that sucker is. <laughs> you know, with the black and the white and all the different kit parts. It, you did an amazing job there, brother. I, I I've seen the videos before, but I really like deep dived into them and checked them out. And uh, well, because I'm planning on doing a five footer, uh, but yeah, there you go. Wind world shish kebab. Yep, exactly. Just had to make sure they they did the right end first. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, cardboard is templates. Yep, yep, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm gonna have to do when it comes to doing that. I, I, what I do for my <laughs> templates for, for let's say the sand crawler here, is I will take a piece of styrene, and I will lay it on, and get a good, a good, the right surface size, right? Okay, and then. I will draw on this on here what the panel should look like so that they'll fit in this space, 
right? And then I'll end up cutting them out and gluing, and I, I'll actually end up drawing it again on there because what happened on the side of it when I first did my first paneling, I didn't I didn't measure it on 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 the sand crawler, and what happened was it started sloping down it wasn't straight so i had to rip it all off and redo it so i actually draw it on a piece of styrene and then draw it on the the actual model and cut the pieces of styrene and put it in place so that they don't like start going in a direction because a lot of these you have to keep like some space in between right so if you don't keep it the right way it's supposed to go you'll lose it like it won't stay straight so that's how i do mine but i think uh, when i start doing the falcon i'm gonna have to use templates like you do so and he's doing another five footer right yeah for john yeah yeah yep yep so yeah i just got his um his uh shells um from from a friend and I wasn't planning on doing a five footer, but now I have to. So, all right, back to Jason's alien technology. <laughs> now oh, this yeah. is right. obvious. These, these came up when I was working on the B wing. Right. What a nightmare. Okay. Um, I started off doing it by hand, and then I said, "This got to be an easier way, right? There has to be a tool like this out there." But I realized there actually wasn't many surprising um i found a maker on etsy i think I, I, maybe these maybe somebody knows better than i do but i couldn't find them anywhere else i couldn't find them at a hardware store i mean it might be common knowledge i just didn't know that i found them on etsy and there's two different versions there's ones like this that create like that little tooth right a little bit of that saw mm -hmm. foot and there's ones that mm -hmm. just do complete perfect squares and rectangles yeah and when you're doing something like the falcon or the b-wing where it has tons of styrene with notches in it you can just click, 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 and just cut away. And for fifteen bucks or whatever the investment was, man, they just they work perfect. And well, they the square one, perfectly. The square one they used a nibbler. It's a sheet metal nibbler. There's actually a brand, but you can find it on eBay. Um, you can get the old one or a newer version of it. It's it's a nibbling tool. Um, I've never seen. Do you? Do they use? On the B-Wing, is there these... Uh, no, oh. but what's good about this is, unlike the Nibbler, it allows you to make different cuts, and then you can then, just with an exacto knife, shape it, make it wider, mm. you know, okay. kind of angle it a little bit if you want to do like a, you know, 60-degree or 30-degree angle. You already have that pre-cut, and then you just kind of straighten it out a little bit. Did you watch uh, um, Adam Savage's video when he was making that that air that uh wing with some plating on it he showed the oh, yeah, nibbler in there yeah yeah, yeah it just it, he showed it in there i just bought yeah, one i had gotten these quite a while back and just gotten used to using <laughs> them and mm -hmm. just found them super easy and comfortable to use and just easy to kind of manipulate after that um yeah. so yeah i just kind of stuck with them and they were they were pretty cheap and they held up there was a couple, you didn't put them in this list, but there was a couple of scribe tools that you had mentioned before that I, that I wanted yeah, to look I've gone into. Through, I, I've gone through quite a few scribe tools. Um, and I, I like them in varying degrees and, and different levels. Like I don't have a go-to like Jonathan. I wish I did. I haven't found that one piece yet that I fell in love with. Um, but there's different ones that I've used in different projects. I mean, like if you look at the tie bomber, scribing on that is unlike any other piece. I mean, that's, just a lot of scribing, deep scribing, et cetera. Yeah. Um, some other pieces you can just scribe with an exacto knife. You can just, you know, take any particular tool you want and, and scribe with it from there. But uh, making a pattern tool to the notches and starting but fucking big one and get box doors. Oh, he found this yeah. specific pattern. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. It's that right size and that right pattern. And, and you know, because even with the nibbler tools, you only get like a specific size out of it, right? It's, yeah. it's that, that one cut. Where yeah. same with this thing, it, it does the same, but at least you can you can manipulate it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The one I I, I never used the nibbler before. I wish 
I had it. I, there, I haven't had to use a nibbler. I, ha I haven't had to cut notches out of the sand crawler at all until the front here. Now on the side, I'll have to do it. I'll have to do it. There's very, very few notches like on the Falcon on this sand crawler. So, um, leather working tools also translates nicely to our hobby. Yes, it does. Yes. I think leather working nail nail tools um there's, there's quite a few and as i mentioned prior to the show what actually kind of jumps out of the idea for the show was um medical med medical um i don't want to say equipment because that kind of um, implies like monitors and things like that but just medical supplies are very durable and meant to hold up but they're very pliable and easy to manipulate like if you're doing a rule for example and you want to measure something that's round we all know that they have the bendy rollers and you know you have your um we were just talking about them earlier the uh, calipers things like that but it's just great to get a quick gist and you just you know wrap it around make your markings and you know kind of go from there um but yeah but there's a lot of other fields where you can take tools that just do carry over nicely trying to get a tool out of my little box here two of them so i got these um clay clay um sculpting tools at at, at michael's and they have little mm -hmm. little spatulas on the end and there's a bunch of different sizes those are nice for you know putting putty in the stuff and then i also use this tiny tiny little flat aluminum ruler and it really i use this to putty everything like i just nice little scraper it in. yeah press it scraper. Down, right? Get it in there. yeah yeah it gets in there real good it's easy to clean like this i use to putty almost everything you like my nails, Jason? Yeah. <laughs> but I can picture good. that be one of the tools that's like always by your side. Oh, this one? Yeah. I use yeah. this for everything. And the thing that pisses me off is I use this little container to hold all my favorite tools, right? And I can never find it in there. And, I, well, and then I start freaking out, like, where the hell did I leave it? It's flat. It's flat. Yeah. It just like it's either on the bottom or it hides yeah, on the side. It's hard to find. Yeah. It's even hard to get it out of the out of the freaking out of the toolbox, too. Let me get rid of this. So yeah. Uh, all right. So what do we got next? Uh, nibblers. All right. So this is actually for when you're building PCs. This is a chip remover, right? When you're when you're Ooh. doing um, chips. But again, as I mentioned earlier, um, initially early on when I was learning in reverse engineering, um, this is a great tool to slide in and to debond things, pop things off. So as I start building and placing things, you know, something may be asymmetrical. I may put it in the wrong place. You know, it may have slid down a little bit as I was waiting for the glue to dry, whatever. This is a nice little piece to just get in there and pop it off. And what I like about the little two, you know, two little indentations of the teeth is when you're really, when you're using real world model kit parts, um, you know, they have the little bits and pieces because you're, you know, putting them onto the tanks or the cars or whatever it may be. And it's good because you can kind of, Put it around those little bits and just get it and, and just give it a nice little pop and it comes off without damaging it. Mm. I mean, we've all, we've all had to pull pieces off and how many times yeah. have you snapped a piece or the piece goes flying or, you know, this allows you to pop it with one hand and just kind of put a little pressure so it doesn't go flying and yeah. <clears throat> you might have to get one of those because I'm always gluing yeah, parts on too. and having to pop them off and re -go pop off. Yeah, that's, that's, I was just like, I, I mean, I'm sure there's other things, but this just came in perfect. It's small, it's tiny, and it, it's just easy to handle, comfortable, and just became like a go-to. Yeah. Yeah. Hemostat. What's a hemostat? I don't know. Let's look it up. Hemostats are cheaper to throw away than sterilize these days. Easy to get to, easy to get if you know anyone in the field. Well, I said nurse. If it's something I could use. Oh, okay. Hemostat's the... Um, what is it? I think it's... If I have it correctly, right? Hemostat. Little grabber thing? Came up on Google. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Oh. Now, hmm. wait. Why is it... Why is there a cord on it? Is it heat, does it heat up? Because they grounded. Oh, okay. Designed to clamp, yeah, it's for blood vessel clamping, hemorrhage oh. control. So you can get them, you can get them, um, either grounded or non grounded. Curved metal working shears for cool shade cutting, straight lines, curvers, perfect too for this material. Curved metal working, uh, tin snips, right? So, 
a curved one that might to get actually circles. Make sense. Hmm. Yeah, to get a circle. Because remember how, how yeah. what tin snips? It was a nightmare trying to cut the pool shade. Yeah, initially. tin snips. I didn't use it. I liked I liked using a very very sharp uh, scissor. It kind of cut, but I wasn't really cutting through the the main support. I was cutting the louvers, and they cut real nice if you go the right direction. But they shimmy but easy. Had, That's what makes me nervous. Yeah. Straight line, straight lines, curvers, or curves. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this little PC yeah. chip remover is, is is a great piece of pop. Yeah, like, got to get one of those. And again, you can find them for three, four bucks, and yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I'm gonna write this stuff down. I'm gonna forget. Uh, let's see. What's what is what is this? Okay, so this comes in. This might not be for everybody. Well, every once in a while, I have the yips, right? If your hands get a little tired, shaky. Um, what this allows if this this comes in better if you're working with tiny pieces, if you've been working for a long time, um, you know, Chris, you can probably relate to that because sometimes you go for hours or even Jonathan, like if you're working on a project, um, if you're doing decals, if you're doing like any type of like, you know, photo etch pieces that you really have to like line up and get into finer detail. So what this does is it creates a it's like a balance bar. You see people who do like mm -hmm. oil painting and they have that bar of someone yeah. they're painting without touching it or resting their hands. So it allows you to keep your hands solid and in place. So when you're placing that detail, that photo wedge piece of things like that. And it's great. It works great for me. It, it's if I'm getting in fine detail and I'm laying something down and I'm towards the end of a project where I can't make a lot of mistakes and I can't just kind of go back and sand and prime and fill. Um, I usually pop this thing out and just get comfortable and, and it, cause it's, it, you know, it's not like it's stuck and you have to move it around quite a bit. It's it's easy to move, easy to adjust. So if you're on one part, you know, just rest your hand, do the placement, and then pull it, yank it, put another part, same thing, and just go on from there. Um, you could probably get these anywhere from 15 to 25 bucks, and I use the console. I still can't picture how you use it. I'm looking at it, oh. and I'm trying to figure it out. So, uh, like I said, do you ever see, like, um, like, somebody working on an oil painting? And they mm -hmm. use those no. the bars. Okay, so like, you let's say you're not getting a lot. Yeah, so like you don't want to rest your hand on it, right? So it right. Allows, it's kind of like a bar to rest against. So let's say you're applying decals, like tiny ones. Let's say you plant teeny tiny decals, and it has to go in the right spot. Or you're using some like, you know, metal photo etch pieces, things like that, and you want to get it exact. Um, this allows you. It's it's a sturdy, heavy piece, so you can kind of just rest and then get that exact precise uh, you know, I see what you're point. Saying. Yeah. So you can just kind of relax your hands instead of kind of doing one of these. Now, not everybody has that issue. I do. So if I'm going in, you know, also too with my vision, if I'm going in and my hand's going like this, then it just allows me to relax my hand, rest it, and then get it precisely where I need to get it. Like the Y-Wing, right. for example, this, this worked great for laying the decals out on the Y-Wing, especially the teeny tiny ones on the back panel. It was it was great for that. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this. So this thing I love. Um, you know, early on, one thing that I used to do is styrene. If I had to make multiple cuts of the same piece, and we talked about this the other day, the measurements on the sand crawl, right? The triangles. Yeah. So normally you would just cut them like as a stack. Well, that isn't always the easiest thing to do, right? Because sometimes, it, you know, it shifts, it gets uneven. I was even getting to a point where sometimes I would drop a piece of glue between a couple sheets of styrene, you know, enough to hold it in place, but, in, you know, not so much that I couldn't pop it apart. And I would cut it so each piece would be exact. But I found this little piece, Micromark makes it. Um, and I use a lot of their, you know, decal solutions and things like that, where you can just basically replicate cuts. So if you're cutting sheets of styrene and you need the exact same piece over and over and over again, if you need two of them or five of them, it'll just cut that piece over and over and over exactly as you need it. Mm. So once you make that one okay. cut, you can just keep duplicating the cut. And this, I think you can take like 20 bucks. Super mm. simple piece. And it's just great for repetition. Yeah. Does that, does that, um, that bar there, you slide the styrene underneath from the left on the right, right? Yeah. And then that's like adjustable it's up a little higher. Mm -hmm. Now what's the, what's the part that curves up there? What does that do? 
So same thing, it just allows you to um, put pieces. There's multiple ways of using it. You can actually see like a little video. I mean, I use it in a very standard way, but if you want to do like different shapes, you can do different shapes, things like that. Um, okay. Just like the micro cutters, right? I, I actually have one on the list, but that's just for like laying pieces in. You can press them down, lift them up. The one ounce plastic cups used to dispense meds are amazing for mixing washes. Keeping track of small parts turned upside down can be used for putting down a puddle of CA glue. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I bought the little Dixie cup shot glasses for yeah. 50 of them for like five He's bucks. talking about those little white like basket weave ones, right? Yeah. The little tiny. Like, yeah, the little pill box. Like the little hospital pill. med cups. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I don't mean that offensively. I just was. Nope. He's... And a chopper. The chopper. So this is basically the same thing, but this yeah. just allows you a little bit more smaller cuts, quicker cuts. Um, you know, you just want to chop up little bits and pieces. But what's crazy about this little piece is you can do all kinds of measurements. You can flip those little bits and pieces around. You can do, you know, angular cuts, straight cuts, you know, varying mm -hmm. degrees. And it's just easy. It's cheap. It's simple. And just something great to have to go to. Because I just got to the point where, like, mm -hmm. I, I get it, right? You can lay down a ruler. You take your, like you said earlier, taking the exacto. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't always get the cleanest cut. And there's nothing no. worse than when you're down to your last two, three sheets of styrene you know you're working on something now oh, yeah you don't want to wait two days for it to come in or have to stop what you're doing and run onto the hobby shop yeah. so having one of these by your side for 20 bucks just makes it easier it's mm -hmm. like a lot of times i will do it by hand if i have tons of styrene but if i'm down to the last couple sheets i just always go to this yeah yeah, yeah I, I don't know how it, yeah i i most of my styrene little little pieces aren't aren't straight at all i can tell you right now just by because i i'd cut one and i'd look at it i'd be like oh and then i'd have to file it to get it somewhat straight um but i'm still waiting for my chopper to show up and i'm sure i'll use See, it a whole lot my problem with that is because i have that ocd and chris you know this specifically with me with the sanding uh, like john's big thing is you know hide your crimes at the paint well i'll keep going till it's perfection and then mm -hmm. it's almost to the point where I take too much off and then I have to start over because I'll get this area mm -hmm. perfect, but then this area is uneven. And if it's asymmetrical, I'll start over. So this, again, some of these tools are subjective because, you know, they may not be for everybody, but for me, this really comes in handy. And again, like I said, this is definitely a go-to if I'm down to like the last two sheets of styrene. I just don't want to mess up or, you know, because when you have tons of styrene, everybody's like, it's like money, right? Hey, just make it rain. You just <laughs> it up and toss it aside. We all do it, right? You just... Ah, I've wasted some. Who cares? I'll cut up more. And yeah, but this is mm -hmm. this is a nice, long, cheap, easy tool. And it takes a beat. Uses, I mean, these, things, these things hold up. Use this a lot, Jonathan. Oh, all the time. Yeah, I've had mine for years. Yeah. It, it holds up really well. Yeah, it, mostly it, it, at home or at work. Both. Both. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, I only have one, so I have to transport it whenever I want it at home. But yeah, <laughs> it's on, on top of my toolbox at work. Yeah, I'm always using this thing. Yeah, That's I've just, never used one. Great. Yeah. And the, the yeah. you'll eventually okay. you'll cut you'll cut a where you keep cutting it'll get bigger and bigger. So you have to take the little cutting pad and turn it like ninety degrees and yeah. Have a new a new cutting surface. Okay. Yeah, the one I got was from I forget what it's called. I actually paid quite a bit of money for it. This one was twenty bucks. Oh uh, like the twenty thirty, yeah, I don't remember. Okay. But between eBay and Amazon, they they range up. Some of them go 50. Some of them go up to, to 100, 100 plus. But those ones tend to be more like they're not better quality at cutting. They're just more weighted so they don't shift. So I tend to – I, I, I feel like the more expensive ones are more like you can't accidentally push them or shift them. Um, they don't necessarily cut better. It's just they're more solid. It's the RP Tools Miter Cutter. The one you have? The one I ordered, yeah. Forget, like red, somebody mentioned red, it. Red anodized. Yeah, red anodized. Somebody mentioned it. Oh, it was uh, Chris on the on on the full, on our group. He mentioned it, and I was like, Sweet. "Yeah, that's a that's a great one." Yeah. I wonder how long it's going to take from Australia. I think I paid it quite a little too much for it. Oh well. Um, Let's see. 
All right, so these are just basically lens up rollers. Um, they're great just because they're rounded and curved, and they just come in handy. I just like to have access to different shapes, sizes, things like that. Um, you know, anytime I can get things that are a little bit more precise when I'm doing curvatures or, or anything circular, I, I just feel better about it, um, especially this mid-piece between the two swoops. If you look at that yeah. center rule, that kind of does that where it's not like a perfectly smooth curve. It kind of almost goes like this and then goes down. What do you use that um, for? Just, I mean, you'd be surprised, man. You, you Once you have really? these in hand, you start using them for a lot of different things. Yeah. I'm trying to think what I would use for that penis-shaped one, but the <laughs> the one that's like curved, I guess. Like a... <laughs> I, didn't think of that. I didn't even realize that. Now I can't oh unsee it. Oh, my God. It. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's even got the hole it. in the top. I can't, <laughs> I can't unsee it. It's perfect shaped penis. It's the way it, and there's no nothing else that can see there. These are also um, good for making your like your placeholder pieces, right? Like on the tie bomber, for example, before I started cutting up all the tubes, and it's just good for placeholders and getting an idea. And again, it just makes nice, clean, rounded bits. And even if you're using it for paper or, or cardboard, you know, I use these all the time. Those are it's great, but you're limited little. to the smaller circles. Where this, you have the no. Other edge. I'm talking about the straight edge and getting a good 90 degree. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. I never haven't used them for the circles yet, but I can. That's Make why I like is... the, see the longer um, ruler that has the angle. That one also comes yeah. in handy, too, because you can use it both inner and outer. And it just it just became one of those sets <laughs> where I, I find myself using it more and more often. I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to figure out. Didn't see that though. <laughs> Pretty kicked off of YouTube. Uh, so I don't. I'm, do you use this at all? Yeah, I use it this quite often. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's even good for measurements when you when you're looking at something kind of odd or 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 off. It, you know, especially if you're using um, like a kit part to scale, and it's mm -hmm. at a weird angle. It, it gives you a good, you know what I mean? Instead of trying to do straight lines and then go this way and go this way, like, you know, you can kind of just get a gist. Again, it's a lot of approximation, but they just come in handy. I don't think I could use that. That would drive me crazy. I'd have to, it has to be a straight line for me. <laughs> I don't know why, but that curved part would drive me nuts. Okay. And. Oh, yeah. Those are this great. thing is, I can't live without a man. Really? What do you yeah, use it for? It a lot. For cutting brass tubing? Uh, yeah, okay. it, all day. All day. Yeah. Really? And it Does cuts it like mess? Oh, it's not too bad. I'll have to get one of these. Because I use the 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 plumber's uh, ream yeah, like yeah. circular tool. I don't know what it's called, but um, for plumbing. I use that one. Yeah, but this is quick. This is just... Yeah, these yeah. are really nice. Mm -hmm. Are they decently priced? I mean, I may be a little off, but same thing. I think they're in like the $25, $35 range. But again, too, there's different varying levels of quality. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm just working on personal projects. So a lot of these things, I buy the lower end ones and they hold up. And then again, they're cheap enough where if something does go wrong, you just buy another one. Like we... Like we talked about with Harbor Freight, like I'll go through Harbor Freight and find tons of stuff yeah. I can use on this stuff. Just like use what you cheap. can for as long as yeah. you can, and then just go rebuy it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. this this is great because what I was what I was initially doing it, what I started off um, when I was more inexperienced, um, I would clip them and then I would you know have to reopen the hole and kind of sand it down. I'm like, yeah. this is ridiculous. Like this is just you know so rudimentary. What am I doing? And then started yeah. using this. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The, uh, the Proxon one really nice. The what? The Proxon one. It's really nice. You need a um, uh, Micromark. Oh, yeah. Okay, Micromark. Yeah. Got it. Micromark has a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Especially for cutting. <clears throat> it's, it's just got a great, great set of, of interesting things to, to cut quickly and, and, and cleanly and evenly. Yeah. Yeah. I could sit and look through a Micromark. Um, uh, catalog for hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So what's next? I don't know what this thing is. This is just a circular cutter. Um, you can adjust it. 
you can go in and out. So it just it basically just cut circles. So if you need circular styrene, half circles, half moons, cuts, quarter mm. cuts, just cut circles. I like that idea. Yeah, it's nice. I forget one of these. Yeah, and this again, just a nice, easy, quick. It just keeps mm. the process smooth and efficient. And you don't really have to do much measuring. You don't have to, you know what I mean? You just take a ruler, whatever you need to do, inch, inch and a half, half an inch, just and cut to it. Little to no. My biggest thing is if I can avoid having to go to it and do any major cleanup, that's the thing. Because like I mentioned earlier, I tend to go, I tend to focus too much. Oh, this is a little off. Let me keep sanding. This is a little off. And the cleaner I can get things, the more efficient I am personally. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a neat little tool. Yeah. Is this another? Oh, it is a sander. This oh, is for sanding, cool. yeah. 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 Okay. This I don't find myself using as often as I thought I would. But when I do use it, it definitely makes things easier, quicker, and, and it's a little bit more satisfying, better than doing by hand. Um, I'm, my thing with sanding is I do a lot of it. Again, a lot of some of it is just that OCD sort of perfectionist mindset, which I I'm, I'm really trying to get away from because I'm noticing that it's not always in my, you know, it's not always in my best interest. Especially <laughs> working on a lot of Star Wars models, a lot of them are so asymmetrical and kind of you yeah, know haphazardly yeah. slapped together. You know, you don't want that perfect surgical look by any means. Um, but I'm still big on on sanding tools and I've gone through quite a few, um, whether it's by hand or, or things like this, but this does, you know, come in handy from time to time. It's just not something that I always have at my desk all the time. Like the cutter tool, like that's something that's always by my side, but this I'll go to it when I need it, but you know, it's still good to have. And again, cost effective, nothing here is more than 75 or a hundred bucks. Hmm. I, there was, um, somebody posted on the other day, um, that they made a jig to sand a curved angle. Oh yeah, who the tie bomber, saw that. Yeah, for the tie bomber. Yeah. And I like that idea. Like it's just basic and you know, it gives you a nice curved edge and gives you a uniform curve. And even yeah. when Stewart was sanding his, um, putting his um, like walkways and um, the, uh, what are they called? The, not the, the um, Underneath on the Falcon, the big section that you have to the cur then you have to get the right cut for it to be to form with the body. He put some right. sandpaper down on that spot and just sanded it to fit into that little into that specific area, you know, um, yeah. to get the exact curve of the body of the sh of the ship. I was watching that. Yeah, yeah. this this it won't quite get you there, but almost like this this can get you you know pretty close to that what i used to do before is i would just get sandpaper use the again the framers tape which um there's varying levels of framers tape there's some that's like almost like super glue um mm -hmm. and then put a piece of sandpaper down and just kind of scratch the piece over it but this comes in a little bit more handy if you're trying to be more precise and, and get things a little bit more like you can see as the example piece how clean of a cut mm -hmm. it's making it at that you know at that angle but yeah, I see in a lot of RS videos they use like they have like what happened? Hello? I'm yeah, we completely can lost my screen. Yeah. Okay, um, they have like sanding. It's almost like a paper towel, whole like a like a paper towel like core, and it's a sand sandpaper on it, and it like like to get into round yeah. edges and stuff and. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's something that they buy. I think it's something that they, they kind of just make. Yeah, it's yeah, stuff it's make sure. Yeah. You know, right. speaking, of, speaking of sanding, Chris, you were talking about trying to, having a hard time getting stuff flat when you're sanding it. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if a trick I learned is if you sand in a figure eight pattern, it really helps. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I, my problem is that I, I put too much, like, I think I have pressure on all sides yeah. but i end up putting too much pressure on once even when i do like a figure eight right like even when i do like circles even i'll put too much pressure on like certain fingers and then i'll end up with a you know like yeah. that 
Yeah, it's, it's like the back of your shoes. shoes. Yeah, you think you walk yeah, normally, yeah. but then you realize yeah. one's more worn than the other. Yeah. Yeah, but if you do, if you do like a, a figure eight, and then every once in a while turn turn the part you're sanding and do it again. Okay. It, it, okay. It'll help. Yeah, I have to try that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's frustrating. It, I'll Usually, turn, I'll, I'll do that like four or five times. Yeah, and you know, do it figure eight three or four times, and then turn it and figure eight, and then turn it and. Yeah, sometimes I'll do it and then I'll set it down to see if it's straight. And I'm like, God, man, this looks <laughs> like an angle like this. It's terrible. So now as, uh, as, we're going just... through these, as we're going through these images, one more thing I want to mention for anybody who's listening or will be listening. Um, I also do, Chris, as you know, but not many may. I also do a lot of found parts uh, stuff, hilts, things like that, helmets. So when I'm breaking apart calculators or, you know, any type of random bit piece that I have to break down. A lot of these tools also come in handy for that. So if anybody who's looking at this being like, oh, I can't ever find myself using this for a model, that I, they kind of serve two purposes on my end. Um, you know, when, when I'm kind of disassembling things and trying to clean things up and, you know, not not damage them or break them and having to pay hundreds or spend months reseeking out, you know, a replacement. I'll tell you what I really want and they're exceptionally expensive are those little vibrating um exacto knives i forget what they're called sonic oh, yeah. cutters yeah sonic, sonic cutters, cutters. Yeah. I, want, I, love those. I want one so bad but i don't really want to spend the 400 dollars on it yeah, there was a really kickstarter expensive. i they are really expensive and i there was a kickstarter not too long ago that had one for like 150 bucks and i, I at the time i didn't have the money for it so i was like Maybe I'll get it some other time, but that's something I really want. And my dad actually sent me a vi a video of this, um, you know, like the like Instagram. It was this guy showing how to he uses weird ways to make tools. So you know those um, multi tools, those vibrating multi tools that have the different heads. He mm -hmm. showed yeah. to to sandwich a. Uh, a razor blade in between it to use it like that the same way but it's just so big and bulky i need something tiny smaller to get into little spots rather than this big like you know two inch yeah. wide thing um let's see what does Stuart say here uh i also bought a small vacuum former from accuvac off micromart that thing is still going making parts like falcon oh I really yes. want a, a vacuum former. I'll have to look into that, Stuart. If you think that, if you say that one works great, like that Falcon cockpit cone is big. So yeah, so that's the problem. With my vacuum former it doesn't do it doesn't have a lot of of real estate. It's for just small bits, and that's the thing I regret. Yeah. Um, had I known better and and done more due diligence ahead of time, I probably would have made a different choice. It works great, but I, I you just it's not enough room to do much. I'll have our, to look uh, into that. Like, our vacuum formers at work, we either have a little tiny one that's like two inches, or we have one that's like three feet. It's like, oh, oh that thing okay. was like fun though. Huh? Nothing in between. I'll have to get Stuart to vac form a Falcon cockpit for me. We'll talk, Stu. Uh, all right, next. What is this? Oh, this is a scriber. Um, but it's a parallel scriber, which is good. And oh, it's okay. also just more for like, it, it serves two purposes, but it's also more just to make sure you get a little bit more precise and exact, but you also have a better handle on things. So you know how you're saying mm -hmm. like jump in the track using the exacto knife? Mm -hmm. This really helps avoid that. So if you get, you know, your first few lines going, that allows you to keep going without jumping that track. Um, mm. Again, I don't really use this too often. Um, I use this more for, found part stuff if I'm doing like helmets or kind of taking apart other bits and pieces and having to make certain marks or, or lines. Um, but I did, I, I did find myself using this on the tie bomber a little bit and found that it was pretty efficient. Hmm. Okay. What is, but if anybody, anybody's today? curious, it's just, it's called a parallel scriber. The, yeah. The... Pen sanders may be what you're looking for in a small powered sander. But the how do you, how do you say that say brand? The spy, the, whatever that brand is, this and the yeah. other piece that like the hand rester, that's that brand. Um, okay. which they make a lot of great tools, Chris. I, I have a lot of their stuff, which you'll yeah. see more as you go through. Yeah. 
Yeah, the next one, I was wondering what, what this thing is. Oh, so yeah. So this is okay. basically for, like, I guess, photo, if you want to just simplify it, photo etching. So this will allow you to bend and mend and curl and twist and whatever you want to, to thin sheets of metal tube. I mean, you can even kind of, not so much styrene because it, it'll snap if you put too much force, but you can if you want. But this is great for any type of like, you know, shaping and twisting of, of sheets of, of, of metal mm. in photo etching. It's, it's fantastic. And that center knob allows you to lift it, turn it. I mean, this thing, you can just do so much with it for a small little tool. It's really, really okay. useful. Hmm. Yeah. Never seen it. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, it's it, it's a great tool. Just I like. I okay. use that a lot. What is this? Again, oh. so going back to sanding. Sander. So okay. This is for getting in. And now we all use those little like needle sanders and shape sanders and, you know, all the stuff you kind of buy off the shelf. But the one thing I notice about those is those wear down very quickly. Unlike an emery board or a professional sanding board, um, those don't really hold up. So if you're trying to get a corner, right? Or even like the metal, you know the metal ones you buy at like Lowe's or Home Depot? They have the square, mm -hmm. they have the triangle. Mm -hmm. Those tend to wear down quickly and sometimes they're even cheap enough where they just break. Um, mm -hmm. This thing is great because you have all the different shapes. So if you need a nice angular corner, sort of something rounded, this thing I just found for me works fantastic. And you can also do mm -hmm. it as like surface, surface sanding which is great too. Like you were saying, you have that trouble of like keeping it steady. So if you're working on like a molded part and you're sending it, one may be like higher up than the other. It might be uneven. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is good for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. I've never seen one of those. Most of these pieces that you had, Jason, I haven't seen. Yeah, some of these I've had for a long time. Um, that I just, like I said, used on different projects and then just kind of carried them over into modeling, but they're all, you know, efficient and helpful. Yeah. And then the one thing- Those that, are all the pictures I have. One thing for, for paint, and I think I shared this with you a while ago, Chris, was that um, having been into painting and even like, you know, urban art, graffiti, things like that, graffiti paints, believe it or not, are made to some of the highest calibers. So like it's such high quality base paint, whether it's acrylic, you know, enamel, oil based. I mean, like, you know, iron lac, Molotov, Montana, they make some of the plutonium, make some of the best paints out there. The opacity, mm -hmm. the, the, the color, it just, they just go on so well. And um, Molotov, for example, makes a chrome. And I tell you guys, Mike, it, it's, it just, this stuff looks like mirror when it finishes better than all clad. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Mm. They come in pen form, but you can actually pull the, you know, you have to bleed it. You can actually pull it off, or yeah. you can get replacement ink, and you can put that into a brush and spray it. Um, and this stuff is okay. like a mirror finish. Yeah. Mm. It's, well, it's you had talked to you had mentioned earlier about that vibrating um, paint mixer. What is that? What is that actually used for? Is it? It's, it's not considered a paint mixer what did we use what is it supposed no, to be it's actually used for labs it's for, for doing like if you're let's say you know the larger ones usually right. used for like mixing mixing or separating like blood and plasma or other different chemicals if you're mm -hmm. doing you know i i mean it, it could be any number of things but they're usually made for labs the paint mixers the ones specifically yeah. made for paint usually have the magnetics where you put the ball bearings in and it'll spin mm -hmm. the ball bearings to mix the paint yeah. but i feel like those the ball bearings are great for um, oil paints, right? Because oil paints settle and separate a lot quicker, um, and they're harder to kind of bring back to life. But for acrylic paints, I like the you know the sort of vibration because that that gives yeah. a nice blend mix, especially if you're mixing two or three different colors. If you're making your own best bespoke uh, paint, um, and then you put it on that, it gives it like a nice perfect blend. And actually, it, it's it's like cupped. So that you could actually yeah. put like a, put a, a rattle in. can. Yeah. Yeah. You I could tip in a rattle can. You can set a rattle can on it. It'll it'll mix up the paint really good. And it it's makes a world of difference. The upside down and inside out. Because the the magnetic yep. ones, you can just sit it one way. But the lab yeah. ones, you can put, the, you know, if you have the squirt tip, you can put that in, shake it up, put it the other way, shake it up. Yeah. And they're not so that expensive on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. They're not that expensive on Amazon. I got one and I use it all the time because... I mean, you could shake it, right? And it'll mix it up it good, but and it, it isn't the same. It mixes so much better with, with these vibrating mixers. 
Uh, I don't have a picture of that. I wish I'd have brought one and put, took, taken one. But those are all the pictures we got, guys. Yeah. Anybody else in the group? Any else in the chat have any other things they use every single day? <clears throat> Let us know. No, so um, that we can talk about. Jonathan, I want to ask you this. Um, so when you're at work, how big a day on, like, protection? Like having, you know. It's. Like, uh, yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty uh, strict about it. It's it's really important. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Respirators. You, just, you see all the um, older. You see all um, the older images, and these guys are like, you know, just painting, smoking. They're just breathing all kinds of. Yeah, just casing, mixing, in the air, mixing you know? resin, yeah. and pouring <laughs> resin. When, when, yeah. When I was in my when I was in my twenties, I worked in a fabric shop. I can't. Shop. Oh and, man. And the guy, there was oh. a guy who was smoking a cigarette over a 55 gallon drum of acetone and he, he would just dunk his hands in the acetone to clean him off and just looks like oh. yeah that's like oh. a that's like a simpsons episode waiting to happen <laughs> yeah i'll tell you i won't i won't paint without a mask on i won't i won't i'm starting to even not glue without a mask on um and i actually put like a ventilation tube to suck the fumes out because every time i do gluing anymore i get a headache immediately and oh, yeah. it right lasts for a whole day yeah. yeah i can't stand it it drives me nuts so I, I you know when i was when i actually was a welder for a couple of years and i had the welding shield down right and i for for like two years i never really thought about it and i just i kept coughing and my wife's like well you are welding <laughs> you're breathing in fumes and the one time i wore a mask for one eight hour shift and it was completely black and I was like, oh, no more. Never again. Like, I'm wearing a mask from now on. And my even even with even with my 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 paint, um, my spray booth, I have a little fil I have a little filter that the fan sucks. And I kid you not, that thing gets caked with paint dust after like a day or two. Like I can't I have to change it all the time. I remember I saw you a picture you posted not so long ago with that mm -hmm. where you showed it. And I was yep. like, I, oh, I was taken aback by that. My two scary moments, because I don't have a well-ventilated area, was that um, I used to sand a lot with the Dremel, right? With the resin kits. Like mm -hmm. when we first started getting the resin kits, you just have to kind of yeah. go to town on them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have anything on. I'm just going and breathing. And then I remember looking down mm -hmm. and my shirt was just covered. And I'm like, if my shirt's mm -hmm. covered like that, then I definitely took in more than I realized right and then the other area that really made me nervous was we have like these kind of like because we have really large ceilings so it's ceilings about 18 to 20 feet high depending on what room you're in but um we have these large kind of like medical grade um air purifiers and that and i'm talking about other rooms right i'd be back in like my utility room painting and then i'd come out and look at the filters on the the air filters two three rooms over and you'd see the paint but not only that the ceiling mm -hmm. fans when they're not, I, one time I was lying in bed and I'm looking up at the sound fan and I see all black paint from when I was priming. And I was like, holy shit, like it's actually on the fan in another room. And that really like, it yeah. jolts you, it's jarring because you're like, yeah. you just take for granted if it's not bothering you, the scent isn't bothering you, you're like, wow. But you don't realize you're you're consuming all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's something that we all need to really be careful for. Yeah. Resin yeah, it, dust is awful. Yeah. At work, I, you know, I'll be in the in the spray booth and with the you know rattle fan primer, and I don't always want <laughs> my respirator, but I really should. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's got you know it's a big huge spray booth and it's pulling a lot of air through there, but still. Yeah, I pretty much yeah, use mask for just about everything now. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think that's a good spot for us to finish. We've been doing talking for an hour and a half, and we, you know. I'm sure there's a bazillion other tools that we could discuss. If, you know, maybe we'll have to do this again yeah, a little bit later two. on down the road, part two, because you know we can even bring somebody else on and 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 have them sh talk about. Everybody's got different things. Everybody uses different things, and what might work for me might not work for you. But but yeah. there might be something that you do that I I might be like, oh well, that will work great for me. You know. So if you're watching this. Comment in the group, like comment in the in the uh, the, the chat on this, in the comments on this video, and also like Chris did, 
um, make a post, you know, sharing what you use and what is most helpful for you. And, you know, maybe one of us will, or somebody else in the group will be like, be able to use that. Hi, Zombie Hunter. You're joining at the very, very end. <laughs> uh, we're about to kick off. Uh, you might have to go back and watch the beginning of this. So um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, these are the kind of shows we want to do. Um, you know, I've always thought when we were doing Rogue One that I always said to you, Jason, that, you know, our channel was a lot more about education than fluff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think even more so now with, you know, our new Nerf Herders, um, it's more about education and sharing, like, techniques and stuff so on modeling and found parts so this is the kind of stuff i want to do i wanted to do i've been wanting to do um some more found part shows uh specifically i wanted to do one about the ad at way before it was announced um and uh we still probably will eventually um the found parts that are on the ad at um but we got a couple other things coming up uh and uh just an update. I'm sure if you haven't read the post, we're just waiting on some issues with the shipping for the for the Cantwell and it's driving me nuts that this is not in your hands yet. So it will be something will happen next week. One way or another, we're going to make this happen next week to get it shipped out. I'm tired of waiting. So um, thanks for all your patience and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you. Jonathan, thanks for coming on. We love having you on. Yeah, we'll thanks to get for having you on me. more often. Yeah, definitely. Our schedules don't always coincide. Like right. generally mornings are best for me. Sometimes evenings I can do, but uh, a lot of mornings are better. But you're you're oh yeah, they're Pacific. We could do it before you could join before you go to work. Yeah, I That's right. you said you would. That's true. Okay. All right, well, signing off, and uh, thanks for everybody for coming on. And let me see the outro. There we go. Bye, guys. Bye.